Um, this is just an old quiz. It might look very similar to the one okay. you've already received in the past, but here it is again. Uh, true or false, sum of exterior angles is always 360 for all polygons. That is true. Right? It doesn't matter how many sides it has. It doesn't matter what shape it is. If you made your exterior angle, if you've added up all these exterior angles, right, uh, that would always add up to 360 no matter how many sides, no matter if it's regular or irregular. The exterior angle of a regular polygon is 24. Then the interior angle is, this is where you need to know the property. Exterior angles, so it doesn't, like, let's say this is the shape we're talking about, right? We know that the exterior and the interior, they always add up to 180 degrees. So to get that one, to get the interior, we simply go 180 minus 24, that's 156. Okay. Um, and so that's the property I wanted you to know there. The sum of interior angles of an irregular heptagon is sum of interior angle. It doesn't matter if it's regular or irregular. You use this formula. Heptagon is seven, right? Seven minus two, so that's five times 180. Nine hundred degrees. The central angle of a regular polygon is eleven point two five. Determine the number of sides. You want to go backwards on that one. Central angle is 360 over N. I hope you have that formula on your, I hope you have all those. Remember the psych formulas, S-I-C-E-D? Do you remember those? I hope they're on your study sheet. So all you need to do is plug in 11.25 into that formula, just like that. Put a one here, so you cross multiply and divide. So it's essentially, as your 360 divided by 11.25, it's 32 sides. Okay. True or false, corresponding angles are always congruent. It's actually false. Because, do you remember those? Vaguely? Um, some of you have this on your study sheet. I've seen it. It's even color-coded. right? But if you have got two lines like this, cut by another one, this is what we call a transversal, this angle and this angle would be considered corresponding, okay? So that is always true, but are they always equal? No, it's not true. It's only if these two lines are parallel. So this would be false. Only if lines are parallel. I'm just gonna say that because we don't have a whole lot of space there. And now we throw, throw in some quadratics. Given that f of x is negative 3, x plus 2 plus k, something is missing here. That's my typo here. It should be squared. Okay, it's, it's a quadratic, it's a parabola. The value of k resulting in one x-intercept would be, what would k have to be? Zero. Yeah, zero. Okay. Um, heads up on the um, vertex form. Make sure you know how do you get your vertex out of that. How many x-intercepts does it have? Like I will ask you in various ways. Do you understand this formula? Can you type it into your calculator and see for sure? Absolutely. But I will also ask to explain sometimes. Right. So we, we know that the vertex would be, if this is zero, the vertex would be what? Negative two, zero, right? Because the vertex is always negative hk. So whatever h is, which is this one right here, we, we switch the sign of it, and then k just stays whatever sign it has, right? But that's the vertex. If k is zero, that means that the vertex is right on the x-axis. State a quadratic equation that points up has a y-intercept of negative 3. When it talks about the y-intercept, you want the general form. Okay, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to make sure A is positive and C is going to be equal to negative 3. 
So we're going to go like this. Y is equal to 5x squared plus 25x. It doesn't matter what this is, to be honest. Minus 3. So we just make sure this is positive and that's negative 3. True or false? Consecutive interior angles are supplementary only if lines are parallel. That is true. Um, we don't have a lot of space, do we? But what are consecutive interior again? It's this one and this one. Okay? And then if we see that these ones are 180, then we can say that th these two lines are parallel. So that's true. Given that you have this equation here, state the range if h is height, t is time. Okay. Uh, 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 typo again. This squared is supposed to be out here. Sorry. Lots of typos on this one. So don't, yeah, get rid of that one. So what's the range? The range is your y values that are acceptable. So I like as little sketch, to be honest. What do we know? A is negative, so it's, good, it's doing this. The vertex is 45 positive because it's negative in here comes positive 15 okay so we know where the vertex is so i'm going to make a little sketch here 45 15 is somewhere in there and i know it's doing this it's pointing up so the lowest y value here is going to be 15. so is this the, yeah so i'm going to say 15 all the way to infinity, positive infinity, right? The lowest is 15, the highest is infinity. You could also just say y is greater than or equal to 15 if you use set notation, that would have also been okay. Okay, this is your 15 line here. And there you have it, true or false. Regular decagons cannot be used to tile a floor. What? You remember tessellations, tiling? You need to figure out if you if you have a way to have exact an exact amount of those shapes to fill up 360 degrees. So what you need to do is you need to figure out the interior angles of a decagon. That's 10 minus 2 times 180 divided by 10, which is 8 times 180 divided by 10. And what is that? For 144. Okay, so that's the interior angle. So now we're going to do the check. 360, you can subtract 144 until you have zero. Or because they're all the same, I'm just going to divide. Obviously, you can tell it's not going to work, right? Because you get 2.5. 2.5 tiles, uh, so this is false. You cannot use regular decagons in this case. True or false, the exterior and interior angles are supplementary. That is always true. We talked about concaves. I, I, I talked about that notion, but we're not dealing with concave shapes in this course. So it's Next, something like this, uh, you should be prepared to solve. It could be anything. It could be a polygon. And, and you remember inscribed polygons where I have lines going across and you have to, your isosceles, uh, isosceles trapezoids and all of those. So that's in the review booklet. So you, you got to make sure you go over that. Uh, maybe I should, I should be pointing out in case you forgot. Just gonna go find it here. Let's pause this here. Try to solve this. Here it is. Um, there's one on page seven. Looks like this. That's a good one. Page seven. 
And then there's an inscribed polygon on page eight. Lots of angles to be solved there. Okay, so maybe we'll do some of this right after I've gone over the quiz because I'll review some of those, those concepts. So you can say page seven plus eight in the review, okay? Let's, oh, I forgot the one here. Okay, a nonagon, you should also know that n is number, uh, n is number nine, right? Number nine sides has the following exterior angles. Make sure you do that carefully. Exterior angles. Three are 35, three measure 40, two measure 42. Determine the unknown exterior angle. Okay. I know, okay, I know that it's always going to be 360. Like the sum of exterior angles always 360. So I need to figure out the one that's missing. So 360 minus three times 35 minus three times 40. Is there three of 40s, right? Minus two 42s. So that's, if you think about it, three and three, that's already six plus two. That's eight angles that we're subtracting. So we're going to figure out the last one. So even, even though you didn't know what a nonagon is, you could have still figured this out. So 360 minus three times 35. I would prefer you showing me work. So that's 51 degrees. And it, and it says last exterior unknown angle, right? It, I could have asked you what's the last interior angle. You would have had to subtract this from 180 to get the interior angle here. So um, keep that in mind. Last one here on this page. A couple of things I need you to make. When there are markings, folks, whether it's an isosceles triangle embedded there or something, those markings are important. They're going to save, they're going to get you out of the hole, basically, right? So you got to make sure you watch out. Okay, parallel lines. So things that cross those parallel lines help me big time. Okay? Remember, only one transversal at a time. You cannot take this 125 over to this side because these are two different transversals cutting the parallel lines, okay? Which one should I do first? I'm going to find A first. It doesn't matter, but please on the exam, even on the exam, I would appreciate you telling me at least where you start. So A is my first one. I know that these two are equal because they're corresponding and the lines are parallel, right? So this is 125 and you just say corresponding angles are congruent, right? Congruent is the same thing as equal. So I know this is 125. I write that in. Now I can find B because if you think of this big triangle here, we can use these um, to find B. So I'm just gonna say angle B is 180. So if you need to do some calculations, that's great. Just show me that work. So that would be 20 degrees. So this is 20 and I just say Y sum of triangles equal to 180. The more information, the better. So I've got this now taken care of. This is 20. All right. What is 20 and 125? Because some students would try to do something there. They're nothing. Okay. There, there are no parallel lines that are connected there. So don't worry about it. Next, I'm going to try C here because this one and this one is alternate interior. So that's my third angle. I'm going to go with 35 here. It's okay to also do it on the diagram and just say alternate interior angles are congruent. And if you, if you need help to, to uh, refresh the, the names and all those properties, go back to the booklet. It's all there, right? We highlighted, we did all of that. Flip through my booklets. They're going to help you. Okay. That's why I highlighted so much. D, you have choice here. You can say consecutive interior because these two add up to 180, or you know that these two add up to 180, regardless, you're gonna get the same answer. So my last angle is this, so I'm gonna go 180 minus 35, and that's 145 degrees, and I'll just say supplementary 
angles are equal to 180 or straight angles are equal to 180. Not too picky there. Just make sure you go degrees everywhere because I do mark like the provincial exam. So I look for uh, units everywhere, things like that. So every little bit adds up, right? So make sure you're aware of that. Let's keep going. Is line L parallel to M? Are these two lines parallel in this scenario? Do we have a name for these two? We actually don't have a name for these two angles, but you can do some ma uh, work your magic, right? We know that these two are right next to each other, so they add up to 180 here. So if this is 100, then we know this is 80. We have a name for these two, and they're corresponding. And since they're not the same, we will have to say L and M are not parallel. So you would say uh, not parallel since corresponding angles are not congruent. You can say that. Simple as that. It's just a one marker. Um, are there different ways of doing it? Absolutely. You could have figured out that this is 80 here and then told me, hey, can, um, alternate interior angles are not congruent, so therefore not parallel. So it doesn't matter how you do it. Um, just remember that. These two are 108. They're called what? Alternate exterior. Yeah, so I can say L is parallel to M since alternate exterior angles are congruent. Bingo. Okay. So basically, they're all congruent except for consecutive interior. They add up to 180. So your alternate exterior, alternate interior need to be congruent. Your corresponding need to be congruent. But your consecutive interior, these two here, if you check, they have to add up to 180. Next, given the regular polygon label, one interior, one exterior, and one central angle. Can you do that? I hope so. One interior angle, you get go to any corner, just make one of these, and just say that is one interior angle right there. Exterior angle, go to any corner of your liking. I'm going to go down here. And you pick one of the two sides that meet there and just extend it. So if you want to extend this one, just go ahead and extend it. That right there is one exterior angle. And a central angle, you go to the center and pick any side and make a triangle with it. And this angle right there is what we call the central angle. <clears throat> so the ice can always be identified on the polygon. Okay? That's Calculate the measure of each interior angle. I would hope you know how to do that already. How many sides? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Please don't um, double count. I put a check mark on the one I start with. One, two, three, and then eight, right? Don't, don't get that wrong. So the interior angle of an eight-sided is this. I hope that you know how to do that. So that's six times 180 divided by eight. I hope you have the formulas. At this point, I'm hoping a lot of things, but uh, I think it's it's in your hands. And if you feel overwhelmed, it's normal. It's normal to feel overwhelmed. Even uh, even I, it's overwhelming for me to just be like, how do I teach you everything in a couple of days? I can't do it. So I'm just gonna focus on a few things and hopefully that gets the ball rolling where you're like, you know what? I need to review my angles, right? I need to review these things. Now I kind of know what, what to expect. Next, calculate the measure of an exterior angle using two methods. Two methods, what are you talking about? Well, exterior is 360 divided by N. So that would be 45. Or we also know that we can find the exterior by going 180 minus the interior angle if we know it. 
both ways are, are valid methods. So we go 180 minus 135, that is 45. So both of them are valid. This one you would only want to use if you already know the interior angle. If you don't know it, just stick with this method right here. A regular polygon has interior angles of 172 to determine the number of sides. Okay, I'm going to say this. If this is the interior, the formula is very tricky. So I would just say my first step would be E is 180 minus 172. So the exterior angle of this polygon is 8 degrees. And then you just use this formula where you substitute 8 into that. Put a one here, cross multiply divide. Forty five sides. So two marks, usually there's a bit more to it. Um, let the marks guide you as to how much work is required. And last but not least, inscribed polygons. I will write that down here for you. Inscribed polygons. And this only works with regular, regular polygons. Just remember that. And um, one thing you need to do first and foremost is count your number of sides. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. N is equal to ten. That's what we call. It. That's a decagon. And some of you might say, well, what about this? Like, wouldn't you count these two? No, these dashed lines are kind of like extensions. They're not part of the original polygon. Remember that. So how do you want to tackle this? I'm going to just make an observation here that this is a diagonal. And it cuts this polygon into various shapes. What do we call this shape that's like in the northern part? Let's count one, two, three, four, five, right? It, it creates five, a five sided. So this is technically an isosceles pentagon. And it also cuts this, like the southern part is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's technically an isosceles heptagon. I'm not gonna. I don't think I'm going to go there, but you could if you wanted to. I went I went as high as an isosceles pentagon with you. So that's if you get up to that point, you're you're in pretty good shape. Okay. So that means that to find y, we know that this angle and this angle are exactly the same. These are the same. That's why I'm going to say this is an interior angle, that's an interior angle, and that's another interior angle of the big decagon. I can find that and then subtract it from what the sum should be here. Do you have that in your study sheet, the sum of a pentagon, what the angle should add up to? 540, right? If you don't, it's not the big deal. You can use this formula, right? You can use S, the formula for S, which is 10 minus 2 times 180, no, not 10, sorry. It's a five-sided that we're talking about. So five minus two, which is three, times 180, divided by five. Sorry, that would be for the interior. But if you just want to, to know what the sum is of all these angles, it would be 540 degrees. So I'm just gonna make a note of that here. I don't need you to calculate it. I just need you to know that. So to solve for y, I use this formula, y is equal to 540 minus, there are three interior angles, which I'm going to find. Okay? And that answer will be divided by 2 because I know these two angles are the same. 
this is the interior angle of the decagon, uh, which I will find somewhere on this piece of paper. I'm going to do that. Let's do it on the side here. I'm going to do it off here. So interior angle of a 10-sided, that's 10 minus 2 times 180 over 10. That's 8 times 180 over 10. We already know that, right? 144. Multiple choice. I'm just going to double check because it's Monday morning and I should double check. Yes, it's 144. Got it right. So this is somewhat somewhat of a necessary step. I'm going to highlight that. Right? This is the 144. That's the one that goes here, here, and here. That's based on the big decagon, right? So this is the decagon that we're that we're working with. Uh, but so first big polygon, then you zoom in to just that one right there. So I'm going to go y is equal to 540 minus 3 times 144 over 2. You have to be careful you do the top first. So I'm going to use square brackets because I already have round brackets. I just don't want it to get too messy there. So calculator time, right? 540 minus 3 times 144. That's 108. 108 divided by 2. That's 54, 54 degrees. So that's why X is Y, I guess, would be worth two marks because there's a lot um, that you have to do there. So this is 54. Let's do X a little later. I'm going to do Z next. How do you find Z? Like, let's just extend this here. And you might think, oh, Mr. Dirksen, when he does that, it's 180 minus the one you know. It's like, no, no, no. The angle that touches here and here, we know this is 144 degrees, right? That's This is technically one interior angle of that decagon. So we're just going to go 144 minus Y, right? So it's 144 minus the one we found. We take away the Y from 144. And that's 90 degrees, right? So this is also a standalone here. So we know Z is 90. And then X, it's out there. Various ways of doing this. Maybe the easiest way, what do we know about this angle and this angle? What do we call these angles here? Remember when you extend it, it's, it's an exterior angle right there. That's an exterior, and that one right there is an exterior. So X is really, the little triangle gives knows, it tells us that the sum of interior angles here is 180. So I'm just going to subtract two exterior angles from 180, leaving me with X. Does that make sense? Okay. So X is going to be, oh, I have, I have room here. Why would I do it there? X is going to be 180 minus two exterior angles of the, remember, it's of the decagon. Um, what is an exterior angle? You, you know it's 36, right? Because it has to be supplementary with the interior. If you don't know this, right, big deal. You just go, I will make sure I get this right. It's 36 degrees, right? So I'm going to go 2 times 36. I'm going to take 236s away from 180. That's 180 minus 72. And that is 108. Okay, so X is technically 108 degrees there. So a blast from the past uh, for you there. And you know what I'm going to say is um, because I want to focus on this a little bit, go to page 7 and 8 and uh, in your review booklets and try it there. Okay, try what we learned here on those pages.